Today I want to show you how and why to use the let formula. So let formula takes a couple arguments, equals let, and you'll see you have a name, so this is for our variable, so we'll call it a, this is referring to our data over here we'll go, so our name value is this cell here, then our next value might be b, and this might be, we'll take the first character of this data that we have, our variable, so we can refer to another variable, and it'll go left of this text and we'll just go um, one, two, three, four. Four. Great. So there you go, you've got that. Then once we've got this we can get what we want returned so we can go, okay, what is our calculation? It can be just, I don't know, A times B. Really simple. And this is a bit of nonsensical calculation, but it gives you an answer, as you can see. It gives you an error as corrected, but yeah, so you've got your first variable, your first value, your second variable, your second value. And instead of referring to A20, we can refer to A, so as long as it's in a previous part of the formula, it'll work equally well or equally poorly, nothing will change, right? Because we're referring back to an earlier part of the let function. Now, why is this useful? The, well, the first option is if you want to have things that might change. So <coughs> let's look at this formula here. So it is a formula to try and sort out this. And it refers to this cell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Like it's just constantly referring back to this same cell. And say that we now have our data suddenly in the H column, well then we've got a problem, don't we? So how do we deal with this? The let formula. So if we go let a is a2, then great. Everything all works, we just go, and if we suddenly have our data in the h column, so now we just need to go, oh, well there's a different reference here, so let's go to the h2 column. There we go, and now it's over there. And now if we fill down, we can see each of these refers to the correct area. So it's really simple. So that's where one reason well, the let formula is excellent is if you need to change a cell reference that's referred to dozens of times in a formula. The other purpose for the let formula is we can combine all our um, information together. So rather than finding this day number in a separate column to this number, um, I mean, I personally still strongly recommend you just use helper columns and if you don't want to see them, just go right click hide. But that's personal preference. Um, but yeah, if you want to just avoid help columns entirely, you can combine everything together. So, say we want this formula here, so we'll get our formula that works for flawlessly, it's convenient, utilizing our let function, great. Um, instead of this though, we'll just set a2 to be this entire range, a2 to a23, there you go. And now it spills down, showing all our dates, great. And that's excellent. So we'll use, instead of having this as our formula, we'll make this formula our variable b. So b will return this entire column of all values. Okay. Um, and our variable c will just take the min of b. Then we can just get our output formula, which will just be b, which is our entire column here formatted. Um, and minus c, which is our minimum, plus 1. And there you have it, you have spilled down for everyone, for our day number. And we have, what, this column, this helper cell, this and this formula, all condensed into one single reference that outputs exactly what we want. So there are your two purposes for that formula. One is just to stop repeated references. This is why I just think it's sensible to use. And the other is if you want to be showy, you can use it to make still semi-readable formulas um, that you can easily troubleshoot when things break. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. This has been a question.